Hi, hi. In this videos, we are going to understand what is stress in the context of structural mechanics. This video is for mechanical engineering students and mechanical engineering professional who deals with this concept concept of stress in designing stuff. So we come across this term stress mostly in undergraduate courses like uh, mechanics of material or strength of material and you might be thinking that uh, what new are we going to learn from these videos about the stresses because stresses are very simple concepts right but what if i tell you that your understanding of stress is actually incorrect and whatever kind of stress you might be knowing of like uh, tensile stress or bending stress compressive stress etc your understanding of those things is flawed so the aim of these series of videos is to give you a better and a correct picture of what a stress is so let's start the whole aim of the subject of first structural mechanics is to understand how the solid bodies behave under the action of several loads so consider this solid body some randomly shaped solid body which is subjected to some arbitrary arbitrary set of forces like this and possibly it is also subjected to some body forces like gravitational force or electromagnetic forces so what we want to do now is to understand how will this body behave under these loads and for this series of videos we'll consider that that this body is in state of equilibrium and it doesn't move uh, in space with respect to time okay so to understand what's happening in, inside this body let us cut this body into two halves okay like this so we call the left part the left part and the right part the right part so let us forget the right for a right part for some time and let us focus on the left part now if the complete body was in equilibrium this section of body should also be in equilibrium so the net force on this yellow surface will call call this a cut surface because this surface is generated after cutting so we'll call it a cut surface the net force on this cut surface should be equal to the net force that's acting on the outer surface of this body okay let's call this internal force that is acting in opposition to these forces as fn okay what this subscript n represent this n subscript represent that this force is acting on a surface whose normal unit vector is n okay so we will signify what plane we are observing this internal forces by this normal unit vector okay so we can think that this resultant internal force on this big surface cut uh, cut surface will be made up of this infinitesimally small internal resultant forces acting on smaller parts of which the surface is made up of consider such a small surface like this now let us shift our focus to this, to this small small part okay so on this surface also the small infinitesimally small part of the surface there will be an infinitesimally small resultant internal force we'll show we'll uh, call it df and n again uh, means that in which plane you are doing and n, and n is the normal unit vector to that plane okay this so if you add up such kind of infinite infinitesimally small resultant internal forces you will get the net resultant internal force okay this this net internal force which part of the body is actually responsible for these forces something is pulling this surface outside right it could be pushing but in this figure 
actually the right part that we threw away is actually applying these internal forces on the left part okay now to calculate what this resultant internal force is let us define a vector okay we denote it like the n again the n signifies 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 that the plane in which you are making an observation uh, its normal vector is n normal unit vector is n now we define this tn such that when you integrate this vector notice that is this is a vector will contain three components in a in a specific coordinate system we, when you integrate this vector over this area so this is an area integral you'll get this infinitesimally small resultant internal force on the surface that on on this surface okay so this is a ma mathematical uh, definition of what a tn is okay we call this mathematical expression or statement as cauchy's postulate and this vector tn is called cauchy's traction vector so what actually this traction vector is it is basically a force vector per unit area at a given point notice that it is a vector okay it could have any arbitrary arbitrary direction on a surface okay as you can see in this picture that if you consider this surface as ds this traction vector are defined at each point on surface and it they could be oriented in any random possible direction okay and this direction definitely depends upon the nature of the forces acting the geometry and all so you can think tn or the traction vector as a distribution okay like you might have uh studied what a uniformly distributed load is what a uniformly varying load is similar to that this is a kind of distributive force but with direction defined at each point inside the body and which depends on the cut on the orientation of the cut plane this is also similar to pressure distribution inside a fluid we know that at every point inside the fluid there is a pressure defined at every point but this pressure p we as we know is always normal to the surface in which you are making the observations so in that in that way so uh, this this traction vector also have directions okay and this actually makes things a bit different from the analysis of fluids static fluids now let us now get back to the right part that we threw away what's happening on the right part okay to understand let us rotate this part and see what is happening okay similarly we'll make similar uh, analysis on this surface as well we'll take a small surface ts and whose normal vector now normal unit vector is now minus n which is opposite to the one on the left part and now we denote the net resultant force on this surface as tf minus n because minus n is the, the new unit vector also notice that this surface is ds and this surface ds will actually are the same surfaces they will be com they will completely overlap if you match its left and right parts okay and that's why by newton's third law you can say that this dfn and df minus n are actually pairs the action and reaction pairs and similarly you can conclude that at every point in this surface ds where we define the traction vector that these traction vectors should be also should also occur as pairs okay that's why the net impact of this internal force if you consider this body would be zero okay in that sense now we saw that uh, we calculated traction vector on a surface whose so unit vector is n and what we observe now is that you as you change that unit vector direction of the plane of cut or the orientation of the plane which are you which are we are which you are cutting the solid with so as you change the orientation this traction vector changes both in direction and magnitude okay since we represent the orientation by this unit normal vector so we can say that as you change the normal unit vector 
at a point the traction vector at that point will also change okay notice note that all the observation now we are we have restricted to a point we started with the body we made a surface we went to a smaller surface on that bigger surface and then we introduced traction at each and every points okay so now we are focusing on a single point now so what that's what we have done previously right we we defined uh, uh, this as the cut plane in the previous example now if we for example say take this as a new cut plane now this the body will be split like this okay now we'll do the similar thing here also we take smaller sub infinitesimally small surface or this bigger surface and define the net resultant internal force acting on this surface and n1 represent the normal unit vector for this surface for the previous one what we saw was this okay now you can see sim by just by observing these two figures the direction of the internal forces is definitely different right because the normal unit vectors are different for these two cut surfaces also the magnitude will also be different we'll see why that is happening by using a simple intuitive picture so in this slide we conclude that in general general these two things this forces and traction are dependent on the normal unit vector or the plane in which you are making the observations now let us discuss a simple picture to understand why these tractions actually vary as you vary the orientation of your plane or you change the normal unit vector okay now consider the example of a solid now first and this is the particle okay which we are focusing on and this particle we want to analyze how this particle is being pulled or pushed by its neighbor for example let us consider this green particles which are the neighbors of this black black particle actually pulls this black particle by relatively smaller magnitude and this red part actually pulls it by a larger magnitude of force and this is uh, yellow part some it, it pulls by some random different force okay now we define this cut plane okay so this is a side view simplified a simplified view and we define the normal vector n1 and we are we are making the observations from this side okay from the left side and we see that the traction vector at this point would be would look something like this because it will be tilted towards the green part because they have the larger magnitude as compared to the yellow part and n1 because we are making observation on a plane whose normal unit vector is n1 now let us change the orientation of this plane let us make it something like this now as you can see that if since we are making the observation from the top now and in this part there is a one red particle half of green half of red and one yellow particle and this traction vector would be aligned or should be tilted towards the red part because they pulls this particle with a larger force as compared to the others okay now the direction is changed in magnitude as well now let us make let us take another orientation okay n3 now this traction t defined on the plane n3 will be even higher because in that in this side we have all three of the particles that are contributing to the uh, traction on the surface n3 are present on the opposite side that's why we get the maximum traction for this uh, vector uh, for this plane defined by unit vector n3 so this is why as because as this this why these particles are differently loaded because why they pull it by different forces this is because of the nature of the loading or the geometry of your solid or the material properties so each particle is actually loaded differently okay these particles would be this red and yellow particles would be interacting with their neighbors and this cumulative effect now then comes out comes to our black particle of interest so now let us try to compare this image with that of a non viscous liquid or a non moving liquid okay so as you can see from this figure all the neighbors of our black particles are pulling or pushing our uh, particle 
with similar forces because this, uh, the colors are same right now. So that's what we observe in static fluids. And due to this uh, constant magnitude of pull and push from all the direction, the pressure, okay, which is actually attraction uh, in some sense, is always normal to the plane in which you are making the observation okay? because they, they'll always be parallel to the normal leading vector. That's why we sometimes call the pressure the scalar because there is no need of the direction because they'll always be normal to the surface in which you are making the observation. Okay, So this is basically the Pascal's law which says that the pressure doesn't change with the direction. So you can, as you can see that that's the major difference between how a, a solid and a liquid reacts to the forces that's, that are acting on it. The traction actually has a direction and the pressure doesn't. So this uh, uh, property that we observe in solid will actually will be used in the content that we are going to discuss in the, in the next few videos that why, how things get impacted uh, because of this property okay now we saw that this traction actually changes with the orientation of plane or the normal unit vector so can we have relationship between how we this components of the normal unit vector and how the traction changes for example a relationship something like this is it a function of is the traction vector is a function of n Okay, note that n is defined as a vector with three components and traction is also defined as a vector with these three components in a specific coordinate system, some coordinate system. Okay. What could be that relationship? The answer to this, prob this question was provided by Cauchy. He observed, I don't know how he observed, but he observed that the traction vector at the point, we are focusing at a point right now, on a surface of some random orientation okay the surface passes through that point inside a body will always be a linear function of the normal unit vector that's what you observed okay and let us let us write this f by a greek letter sigma okay and so now the problem in front of us is to find out what this function sigma is the only information that we know right now is that it is a linear function of normal unit vector okay so in the next video what we are going to do is we are going to discover or find out how this sigma looks like and uh, uh, understand what a linear function is and how does it help in deducing what the sigma looks like so that's it for this video. In the next video, we'll start the journey towards this discovery of this sigma. So thank you for uh, your time and uh, please subscribe if you like this video. Thank you.